So I'm gonna give you tips to sell your magic collection and your magic cards. Number one, always treat it as a business. That means accounting, accounting, accounting. Even if your accounting is, I guess it depends on different levels. If you are just gonna sell a collection and your collection is anywhere under $5,000, I think you can probably just keep an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you definitely wanna know the cost of the car that you bought and, the, and then the sell and if you made any profit or you lost any money, right? Now, if you sell above, definitely above $10,000, I would definitely get QuickBooks Online. Uh, it is a very good program. It is a expensive program. I have QuickBooks Online for my companies and it does a good job of tracking. It has an app and you just scan stuff and, and track it. You cannot treat this as a hobby. This is the real deal. I know the tax situation got, uh, you're supposed to still report by the way. Uh, so it's not like you're not supposed to report. It's just that these bigger organizations like eBay and PayPal can choose not to. Um, and they probably will not choose to report because their user base would really not appreciate if they reported it, if given the option not to. So how do you sell cards? Number one, you wanna make it as easy for the buyer as possible. Um, you wanna make a list of cards. You wanna make the, uh, the con so it has to be the card name, addition, list, uh, or the, uh, the condition, and then also how many copies you have, and then what you would like for the price. One of the biggest time wasters is when you don't know what you actually want for the card, and then there's this kind of gap and misunderstanding where maybe the card I, the price I want is way lower and the price you want is way higher and there's no middle ground. There, there's obviously no middle ground that card. And we waste a lot of time just trying to argue essentially. So you must have a clear idea of what, it's up to you. If you are the seller, it's up to you to present to me, the buyer, a list of cards you would like to sell and what conditions uh, if they are more valuable cards, and I expect a screenshot of the actual card. Now in person, uh, yeah, I will test the card if it is real, especially the more valuable ones. And the condition could be an issue in person that was not an issue in the spreadsheet. Because again, it's a spreadsheet. Uh, you need to know what prices are worth. You are the seller. It is your responsibility to be accurate in your prices. If you pick a buy list, um, the reason I always use a buy list, it's easy, it's updated, and if you want a margin over the buy list, then we can discuss the margin. But if you tell me this is Card Kingdom buy list, I would like 10%, 15% over. We can negotiate now. Very simple. I know where your prices are. I can double check them. I can confirm them by one or two, or I can just trust you. You as a seller, have, the more you do, the more leg work you do, so I can take two examples. If you have a collection, you don't have an Excel spreadsheet, you don't have a list, you didn't find a buy list, I cannot offer you a high price in that collection. You know, I even, if I'm, going to, I'm going to look at the cards, I'm probably going to underestimate what they're valued because again, I don't, you have, I have to do the work for you. For, so in terms of building your collection out and getting that list together, you need to do that because you can max, you can, one of the, the things that people do the least is to, the, one of the easiest things to maximize your collection is to do the work, put your cards on a list, and then put the price you want. And I can go down card by card by card very quickly to identify if this is a collection I would like to buy and throw you an offer. If you do not have a list of your most valuable cards or a general idea of what the collection is worth, I'm going to, I have no choice and neither does anyone else but to have to give you a low price because I, it's risk. Okay, the more risk I have to take in buying a collection, the lower the offer I can give you. If there's no risk, because you have a list of all the most valuable cards and then the bulk sorted and you know, in such a easy way, you've done the work for me, I can offer you a premium, I can offer you a higher price than buy list because I have to be competitive. You have to do the work. Um, you can't just take a collection and so you're going to get absolutely beaten down to a pulp. So number one, do the work, organize it, keep an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and then also 
basically be organized. You know, so when I see a list, I want those cards in that list so I can check the conditions for especially the more valuable ones. Uh, the next thing is negotiate. There's always room for negotiation. As somebody who buys collections, I can tell you I'm not going to lose, and I've said this a million times uh, in my collection buying, I'm not going to lose a collection for a few hundred dollars if it's a $10,000, $20,000 collection. I'm not going to lose a collection for 2 to 3%. Like you, you must understand that like if I'm going to waste the time to talk with you, to, to discuss your collection, to look at all these charts, to make sure the numbers make sense and the buy list we're using is accurate, if you want to push a little bit, yeah, I'm, it's not a deal breaker, at least for me. I've already committed to the time. I've already, my time is extremely valuable. If I'm going to commit my time to go over this large collection with you and to discuss prices and why I want this price, why you want this price, discuss conditions. Um, uh, a few years ago, I had a guy and he was going to put a down payment on his home. It was a pretty, really nice guy. And I think there was like two cards we couldn't agree on. I wasn't exactly sure what they were. I think they were foil cards. And again, I'm not a big fan of foils. So they, they were very expensive foil cards. I looked at it and said, I'm not going to let the deal go over a small percentage. Uh, I've always said this to my distributor. I've just said it to everybody in life. Uh, one of the stories I can tell you is my best employee, employee one, my first employee, uh, I turned out to be my best employee and we worked together for about a year, maybe a little bit more. She's actually appeared on videos before in my Douglas and Run Rex videos. And she was a fantastic employee. I let her go over a very minimal amount of money. And since that time, I've never been able to really find anyone as uh, dedicated to the business as she was. Now, that was a mistake. And for Magic Collections, I've let Magic Collections go. As I, the legendary Magic Collection I let go uh, for you know a few hundred dollars. My mindset today, and this is, I think, made me a lot more successful as a business owner and as a uh, buy, person who's buying, but this, this is something you should know, is I'm not going to let something go for a few hundred dollars or whatever percentage it is you always have room to push and it doesn't hurt to push. If I really can't get to that price, I'll let you know. I'll say, no, I, I really can't, this is it. And don't be, uh, lastly, don't be afraid to walk away from a bad deal. There are plenty of people you can sell magic cards to, plenty of online buy lists. You don't need to take the first deal given to you as a buyer. You can explore your options, you can, even negotiate and leverage. If your collection really truly is unique and valuable, you can negotiate. You have, let, do not be afraid to negotiate, one, and don't be afraid to walk away. Because that's when, you know, when you're walking away is when I'm thinking, oh, am I making a mistake again? You have to know, number one, you have to know what you have. You have to know what your leverage points are. And you have to know, like, like uh, for instance, what if it was like, for me, there's some cards I really would like to have. Uh, one of them is the Japanese uh, Animu version of Liliana from War of the Sparks. If that's in a collection, you probably know you have a little leverage to get away with a little bit more. And I'm not going to let that walk away. So in, in my experience, you, you do need to know what your collection is worth. You need to know what p p pieces of your collection are really easy to sell. Maybe you could get even more for that. So you can leverage those pieces to sell the whole collection for a good, great deal. And I'm free, don't be afraid to walk away. You know, there'll be, there are plenty of people willing to buy your collection at the right price. Maybe the, the first person you talk to, I, I always tell the people to look at buy lists and look at other companies and just come back to me. Like I have, you know, when people say, I, I don't know what's going on. Like I always say, hey, no, you take the time, you figure out you know, what your class, you gotta be knowledge, you, you have to, I don't ever want to buy a collection and then have the person feel like I took advantage of them because they didn't do the research. I'm always gonna encourage you to look at other buyers, look at other you know, people and companies online, local game store, whatever it is, right? 
because that person is likely to have some Pokemon cards and some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's, you know, anime figures. Uh, some of my best purchases later on have been completely unrelated to Magic, but were, was a good deal for me and a good deal for that person. Just keep the lines open and not be a douchebag is what I've learned. And it's it's hard sometimes, you know, I want to be very sharky, and, but I always control. I said, no, no, no. Like, you got to think long term. And this is kind of owning a business. So if you watch my old videos, like MTG Finance videos from when I didn't have a business, I was just like an employee of a business. You have a totally different mindset. Uh, my mindset right now is very like, you know, long term. Because you know, I expect my business to be here for 20 more years. I'm not going to jeopardize something today that would affect my business for 20 years. It's not worth it. Hi, guys.